character creation for RPGs can be complex. I have lots of videos trying to help people understand how to do it for different systems. And over the course of looking at RPG rulebooks from that perspective, I've noticed that they often start out speaking in a bizarrely theoretical future tense, addressing the reader as if they were going to build a character. Phrases like, first, you will choose a race, and then you will choose your skills. Then over the course of the next few chapters, these player guides describe the options readers have to choose from. It's almost aggressively labyrinthine. First, I pretend to think you can memorize the steps you need to take to end up with a character, then I throw you into the deep end with all the options you have to choose from, and then demand you emerge with a character. I have exactly seven ideas on how building a character can be less of a barrier to entry for new players, and here they are. 1. Write in the present tense. Strike the word will from your text, basically all the time, but especially in RPG. Your reader isn't reading your rulebook to find out what might happen, in theory, someday. You want your reader to be a player now, so give your player the gift of the present tense. Every time you pick up a rulebook to read it, after all, wh whether it's the first time or the hundredth time, you're reading it now. Books don't happen in the future, they happen now. When you write instructions on how to build a character, assume your reader is actively building a character. Don't tell your reader what they will do. Tell your reader what to do right now. It eliminates confusion about when to proceed and encourages the reader to break out paper and pencil and to build. Related to that is to use the first person singular when you're writing. I'm speaking directly to you. We are not speaking to them. I am speaking to you. When you build your character, you need to do this. It isn't when we build our character, we need to do this. It's directly one-on-one, -on -one, as if though you were sitting right there at the table with your reader. It feels personal, and it's clear about who needs to do what. 2. Use imperatives. An imperative is a verb that commands. We use imperatives all the time in real life when we say things like, look at that, and hand me that book, and roll dice. Those are commands, and when used politely and with friends, they're not considered rude or presumptuous. In fact, the advantage of imperatives is that they're clear and concise. There's little room for misinterpretation. If you say, hand me the player's guide, then it's clear to me that you want me to give you the player's guide, probably the one that I'm holding or the one next to me now. If you say, you could hand me the player's guide, then it's a little less clear what you want. Yeah, I could hand you the player's guide. Do you want me to? W when do you need me to do it? Do you need the player's guide right now or when I'm finished with it? Use imperatives. Tell your reader exactly what to do and when to do it. It's not rude. It's not abrupt. It's clear concise, and efficient. 3. Provide an ordered list. Building a character is a linear process. No matter how over-complex you've made it in your RPG system, it starts somewhere and eventually ends. Use an ordered list, 1, 2, 3, and so on, to guide your reader through each step of the build process. This helps your reader differentiate between information you're providing just for context and an action you need your reader to do in order to complete the build process. For instance, it might be useful to describe what game function the intelligence attribute serves. But now that you've brought it up, is it something I'm meant to go calculate and fill in on a character sheet right now, or is it just context to help me understand how the game works? If it's a numbered item in a list, then it's clear that it's an action requiring completion. It's one of the steps toward the end goal. 4. Describe how to create a character sheet. Many RPG rulebooks threaten the reader with the character build process. They provide a description of how to build a character, and then they send you off to wade through the rest of the book on your own. This is a backwards model. It gives you broad information and then dares you to condense it into specifics in the form of a character sheet. The problem is, Little to no guidance is provided on how to fill all the information. What 
key words from a 500 word description of a dwarf gets written down on a character sheet for Pathfinder compared to Shadowrun. If you don't know the game yet, it's impossible to say with certainty. Look at any empty field on a character sheet for a game you've never played and try to guess what could possibly be entered into it. I can think of at least six possibilities for any given field. A number generated by a die roll. A number generated by math performed on the contents of different fields. A number provided by the rule book. A special keyword or text copied from the rule book. Some descriptive text of your own invention. Any of the above, but not at first level, so you can ignore it now, but you'll fill it in later. If your rulebook has an official character sheet, then write your character build process with the assumption that your reader is using the character sheet. For example, read through these ancestry descriptions, and then write your chosen ancestry in the ancestry field at the top of the official character sheet. If your game doesn't assume a specific format, then tell the reader what to make note of. Read through these ancestry descriptions, and then write down your chosen ancestry, labeling it as Ancestry. 5. Deliver information on a need-to-know basis. At first level, a character is at its most basic. Regardless of how complex that character is going to get, it's never simpler than it is at first level. A new player doesn't need to know what features they're going to get at 12th level, or even at 2nd level. They only need to know the choices they need to make right now. Choose your character class. Knight, Witch, or Jester. Write your choice on a sheet of paper. It's fair to consider that what a character gets at second level and beyond might influence a player's choice of where to begin, but that can usually be summarized in just a sentence. For instance, a witch communes with the forces of nature for basic spells, and later develops powerful spells with the help of a spiritual guide. That says everything that needs to be said for most players, especially if you compare it to something that might have been written for the knight, for instance. A knight protects the weak and vanquishes evil with deadly attacks and powers granted by the gods. If you think players should be required to read everything that's in store for their character, then just say so. Read more about the witch class on page 66. After reading, return to this page to continue. 6. Don't use examples instead of instructions. Examples can be great. I've used them in this video, but there are no substitute for instruction. I've also used those in this video. It's common for RPG books to demonstrate concepts through, appropriately enough, imaginary scenarios. The problem with imaginary scenarios is that they describe exactly one scenario. For example, Jane has built a witch and wants to cast a spell. Her first two dice roll a four and six, and the third rolls one. Her spell succeeds, and she crosses out one spell point from her character sheet. That's a useful example, as long as you understand the rules governing dice rolls for magic. You could read 20 more examples and possibly reverse engineer the rule, but rulebooks aren't meant to be puzzles. When a rulebook has too many examples, it's often an indication that the game designers haven't actually defined the rules in a global context. They understand how the game is supposed to work, and probably how it has worked during playtesting, but they can't say for sure how all those rules interact because they haven't defined the rules outside of gaming activity. The problem with that is that when players do something unexpected that nobody foresaw, then rules don't seem to agree with one another. Create rules that can be expressed definitively without context. Add context for a glimpse of how your rules affect the gameplay, but don't rely on gameplay to reveal the rules for you. Here's the rule governing my imaginary spellcasting scenario. 1. Provided you have at least one spell point, you may cast a spell. Roll a number of d6 equal to your current spell points. Any even number counts as a success. Ignore odd numbers except 1. When you roll a 1, you expend one spell point. For some people, it's hard to parse those rules. I think it's very clear you can literally step through it, but for some people that just doesn't quite compute until they see it done for themselves, and that's what examples are great for. But as a reference, and as a definition of what's actually happening in the game, it's important to have those rules listed out, written down, devoid of excess context. 7. Include some ready-made characters. I love building characters, and I think building a character creates 
an important bond between a game system and a player, and between the player and the character they're going to pretend to be during the game. But sometimes you just want to sit down and play an RPG for an hour or two. That shouldn't be impossible. A good set of pre-built characters are beneficial for lots of use cases. Here are some of that I can think of off the top of my head. Experienced players who are too busy to build a character and just want a quick game. New players who aren't used to building characters. Any player willing to try a new game but not willing to invest the time to build a character for the game. Any player building a character and who wants to see a correct build to compare theirs against. Writing has developed a lot in the past several decades. It seems we're still trying to strike the right balance between clarity, precision, and simplicity. The RPG books on my bookshelf, and maybe yours too, reflect the changes of how writing rules for games has developed. I think it's gotten better, but we still have a long way to go. If you're writing RPG material, keep these ideas in mind and see how simple you can keep your instructions and how you can structure your book for clarity. Thanks for watching.